Hi all, Lee Veras here with another Phototech Tuesday. Each week I'll be bringing you another video exploring photo techniques, equipment, software, creativity, and more. And today I've got a quick and easy hair masking hack to make your composites perfect. And, and yes, it, it does involve AI in the form of generative fill. So let's just dive right in. Okay, so here uh, I have uh, I have two images open in Photoshop. I've got this uh, background. This is uh, a wall in Tuscany, and here's another shot from our last trip to Tuscany with uh, with my wife, the uh, the famous Bobby Lane, amazing photographer, and my partner in all our uh, photo tours. So uh, I'm gonna want to take her out of this background and place her in front of this wall. And I've chosen this really because it, it represents a really difficult masking challenge to get the hair. You know, the hair is, this hair edge is definitely a really furry edge with a lot of flyaway hairs. And the background right behind it is fairly chaotic. So uh, this is just is going to be kind of a challenge. Um, now, we, we want to take her and place her on another background. Um, I've opened her up here as a smart object. I'm going to go ahead and flatten this. Um, and I want to create uh, a mask to separate her from the background. So I can see here in my, my contextual taskbar here uh, that I can select the subject. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And Photoshop's now going to identify the subject in the photo. And sure enough, I've now got marching ants all the way around. And uh, now you'll, you'll know that if you select a selection tool while you have a selection active, you can get this little button that takes you into the Select and Mask dialog. And this is where we really get to refine uh, the mask edge. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. Well, actually, let me stop right here. Before I do that, I want to make sure that my preference settings are set up to give me the best results for this. So I'm going to go back here. Uh, under the Photoshop menu and, and select settings. And what we're really going to look at is uh, the image processing preference settings. So let's look at that. And here, what I want to do is my select subject processing. I want to make sure that it's set to cloud. Um, you can see this little drop down here. It's either device, which gives you quicker results, or cloud, which gives you more detailed and, and basically better results because the calculation is handled uh, on with Adobe servers with much more powerful computers than what I've got sitting here on my desktop. So make sure we set up cloud. And the other thing I just want to point out so that when you, when you see it on my computer, uh, you'll understand what it is, is the transparency settings. So, so normally we have uh, these default settings, which give you this sort of checkerboard pattern. You know, we can have medium uh, or dark checkerboard uh, or, or light checkerboard. And um, we can also choose medium or small. Um, but the contrast between the checks is fairly high here. I'm going to go ahead and turn this to large. And what people don't realize is you can change these colors. These are the colors of the checkerboard. So what I like to do is click on the lighter one and then just start making it darker. I'm just dragging down on the edge of the color picker and looking over at this area. And I'm going to stop when I almost merge. I'm just bare subtle sense of a checkerboard there. And that's now my new transparency display. And you'll see how this comes into play uh, in a minute. But again, now we have, a, we have a selection tool and we have the select and mask button. We're going to go ahead and click on that. And now I'm in the mask, uh, select and mask dialog. And this is where we can, uh, we can alter things. We can alter the edge. In this case, I'm using uh, the overlay um, section here, the selection for view, the view mode overlay. We can pick a bunch of different things mask on black. Um, but I like to use overlay because I can kind of see a bit in context and I've changed the color. If you click on this little color patch, uh, and normally I think it's defaulting to red, but we can change it to blue. Um, in, in, in my case, I'm changing to blue so that I've got a lot of color contrast 
between the color of Bobby's hair and now this blue overlay, which represents the mask, but it's also a contrast to um, the color of the background, which is predominantly blue. So we can see if we look through into the into the hair edge, there's a little bit of the background kind of back there. So if I pick my overlay, I want to be able to see a contrast between that blue and inside here, you can kind of see some of the green background showing up. Okay, so again, you know, not this, this is actually pretty amazing mask edge, but it's 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 not it's it's not great. It's kind of posterized and kind of sloppy. And we have now this button, uh, refine hair. And it's almost always, when you have hair like this in, in a mask, it's almost always a good idea to go ahead and click on that, that button. And now Photoshop recalculates the mask and attempt to get a little more subtle edge in there. And you can kind of see it's eating into the edge of the hair in a more realistic way. And it's actually pretty decent on this side. On this side, it's a bit problematic. Um, and we knew that was going to happen. This, this, this is just impossible to get a really good hair edge here. Um, now we could play around with our edge detection radius. I often like to put this up to about five pixels. And it, it'll again, it'll soften the edge even more. Um, it also does a, usually a good thing um, finding edges. Uh, and, you know, there are little problems all over here. I, I could go around and edit all this stuff out. I can use the, the brush tool here to um, either remove things in the mask. I'm going to kind of go all the way around and take out these little kind of little kind of mistakes where it's picking up little pieces of the background. And I could go all the way around. I'm not going to bother to do that because I, what I want to show you is a trick for getting better hair masks. And um, we will do that in the next step when I open this into uh, Photoshop. So right now we're in the, in the the mask dialog, I have to take this back into Photoshop. So I want to check my output settings here. I don't think I need to decontaminate the hair color. It's uh, it's not really, that background's not polluting the hair edge very much. So I'm going to leave that unchecked. But I do want to output to not just a selection, but a new layer with layer mask. So go ahead and select that and click on OK. And now Photoshop automatically makes a new layer and places a layer mask around it. And now you can kind of see with that more subtle checkerboard pattern, I can get a better idea of what's going on with the edge. I can zoom in and kind of see, yeah, there's some ghosting stuff where the background is showing up. Let's see how that's going to look uh, when, I, uh, when I move this into the new background. Okay, so... Here's my background. It's in this tab. Here's my subject. I'm going to get the Move tool. And I'm going to drag Bobby from here over into the new background. So I move up to that tab. I'm still holding on, on the mouse. And I move down. And when I let go, I'm going to drop Bobby into the scene. So let's move her. I kind of, I kind of like this area here um, where she's sort of under these bricks. And uh, let's see, I've got, yeah, sort of a nice, nice kind of right there. All right, so let's, let's zoom in and take a look at this hair edge again. So you can kind of see there's problems over here. It's not very, it's all kind of, it's really kind of nasty everywhere, right? So it, it's a difficult hair edge. So I'm going to just back up just a little bit here. I'm at 100%. You can see down here, 100%. Um, and now it's time to really fix this edge. And we're going to do it the easy way. I'm going to get the lasso tool here. And I'm just going to start out surrounding or outlining, circling with the lasso, the area that's a problem. All I do is circle all the way around that bad hair edge. And now I've got in my text, uh, contextual taskbar down here, I can see generative fill. So we're going to click on that. And instead of filling this in, saying anything about it, I'm just going to click on Generate. And 
now we're generating something that's going to match or blend in with what we've already got there. And now I have three versions of a new hair edge. That, that looks pretty good right there. So does that. I'm, I, I think I like this third one the best. So now you, you get the idea, right? Um, let's, let's fix this area up in here. So I still have my lasso tool. I'm going to go ahead and lasso around that. We'll click on our generative fill and generate. It's always giving me little tips here on how to do this right. Okay, again, three versions. Do I like that one or this one or this one? I kind of like the middle one. Now you'll notice it's actually inventing material for the background as well. So we're gonna that, that's gonna become important. So let's just make sure we're we're aware of that. Now I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna I'm gonna finish this up. Uh, I usually try not to do the whole hair edge all at once. I'm I'm selecting kind of a big area right now. But um, it is good to kind of do this a little bit at a time rather than trying to lasso all the way around the whole hair. Uh, but we'll, let's finish this up. Generative fill, generate. And uh, we're, again, we're going to get three variations here. Okay, so do we like that edge, this one, or this one? Go back to that first one. I think it's between these two, this one or this one. I think I'm going to go with this last one. All right. And now we're, we're done. Now I must point out here um, what you have if I, if I turn off the background entirely. You can kind of see the generative fill is actually making up the background that's behind the hair here. So at this point, I can't, I can't actually move Bobby and against the background because if, if I select all of her, which all four of these layers now are part of Bobby, if I select all of those and try to move around, I'm moving the background with me, right? So that, that's no good, right? So you just have to remember you want to get your subject in the right position first before you start fixing the hair edge. Okay. <laughs> So that's it for now, and I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. This should give you some ideas for other AI fixes for difficult masking jobs. You can use this for any kind of edge that you're having trouble with. Uh, so if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and ring the bell so you don't miss another Phototech Tuesday. And I'll see you next time uh, for the next Phototech Tuesday. Bye-bye, everybody.